February 28th, we will be getting three new abyssal creatures. And I'll go to the website page right now. And then right off the bat, once this update hits, we will no longer get that 50% Slayer experience along with double Slayer points and Reaper points. And again, this does not work for Iron players. Now, if we scroll down just a little bit, we'll see this picture right here. Honestly, from the background, it does look like it's in Turgo's Forge. That's in like the War Forge area of archaeology at that 110 and 119 spot. Remember, we did have that writings on the wall. So maybe this was like a insight on like where the portal would actually be. So I'm not too sure about that. But then you do see the user wearing the dual wheel tier 92 weapons. So maybe this boss uses either melee or magic. But anyway, let's just scroll down and right off the bat, you'll see the first one, which will be the Abyssal Savage, which requires 95 Slayer. And then for those that have done the Ascension creatures, the little puppies, I believe they're Roros. Once you attack one, multiple will start attacking you. So this is exactly the same thing. They'll just pile up for their own survival so we'll have to see if this will drop keys and then we can kill the boss or this is just a kill and then something possibly to afk and since it's only 95 slayer which is the lowest it could be a viable slayer method next up will be the abyssal beast which requires 105 slayer you'll notice it has a regular form and then it has an enraged form. This has a chance to siphon your life force. So it might be like next during the blood phase where she'll demand a blood sacrifice and then take some of your health and then heal her 10,000. Then there's also another mechanic. You'll need to probably dodge its massive tongue. So it might be like the Solowa Ox in Solvaheim Dungeon where you have to stun them so they don't like smack you painfully. And then lastly, we have the Abyssal Lord that requires 115 Slayer. But let's just take a look at him. Just look at those wings. He looks like a real vampire. This could have been the Lord of Vampirism, I believe. You'll notice his head kind of looks like a little squid or from the Pirates of Caribbean that I believe his name was oh man I forgot Blackbeard that or Davy Jones it was one of those two I'm pretty sure and then if we scroll down just a little bit it says this and this boss which requires 115 Slayer has the ability to summon multiple minions to help defend the boss so i'm thinking this could be in two different ways it could be like necrios where they will spawn a spawn and they will attack you but they only summon one at a time or it could be like queen black dragon where she spawns grot worms continuously until you phase her so it could be a potential dps check if you want to avoid all of those minions as for the rewards we will be getting an Abyssal Scourge, which is a tier 92 whip that does not require the components of the whip. So there goes the whip sync I was really hoping for. And then this whip has the ability to add puncture effects, which is most likely a bleed in form of Nelly, as the puncture ability is for a range from Shattered Worlds. And then what these stack does is it'll pretty much refresh when you do a bleed ability and then it'll add one more stack and then if the target dies it will explode in a five by five radius 
and I think dealing damage to that, or it'll just add stacks to those other NPCs with half the stacks of the original. And then this is unlike anything before. Previously, we have had Corruption Shot and Corruption Blast, where it's an AoE, but it does not aggro monsters. This Abyssal Scourge weapon, it will have the same AoE effect, and it will aggro all the targets on you. So this would be very good for Slayer, in my opinion. And of course, if you do have the Champion's Ring, it could be good because that increases your critical strikes while some monsters are being bled. Although, I don't know if this parasitic effect would be considered a bleed or a burst type damage. And then, as for another reward, we will be getting a new Absol Helm. This is a tier 85 DPS for melee, and while wearing it, all bleeds. Well, when you're using any type of bleed, your basic abilities will give you plus 2% extra adrenaline per bleed type. So, in my opinion, I think what that means is, instead of the normal 8, if you put a dismember, you'll be getting 10% adrenaline. Now, if you add slaughter in the mix, you'll get from 8%, you'll get 14 adrenaline. So I think it's just two extra, two extra adrenaline. And then if you add, let me see, I think blood tendrils, that'll be six extra adrenaline per hit you'll be dealing with. Although I'll have to wait until the weapon is in game to even see if that's what they meant, or they meant physically each individual bleed instead of just the three bleed abilities. And then we will be getting the Abyssal Armor Spikes, which I don't even know if this is going to be good or not, honestly. Previously, we have the Normal Armor Spikes and the Alloy Armor Spikes, which once you get smacked, it recoils the damage immediately. But with these new Abyssal Armor Spikes, it will have a chance to proc and it will apply the parasitic poison effect to the NPCs, so I'm not really sure if this would be good for group PVM. I mean, it could be, unless like it procs super quickly. And then just remember that with the helm, the jaws of the Abyss helm, it could be beneficial to start buying and using the Masteric Spear of Annihilation, as again, that enhances and prolongs the bleed effect abilities. With that, that covers all the new three Abyssal creatures that we will be getting on February 28th. With that, thank you all so much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.